Hey guys, All In Crypto here and welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video. Today we've got a special guest joining us. Some of you within the Cardano community may already notice um, Vineeth and be familiar with him. Vineeth is the Managing Director for Emergo Fintech. Welcome on board Vineeth. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's a real pleasure. Um, now, I first heard about Anzin and what they were doing. Of course, Emergo is a long-standing company within the Cardano space um, and really loved the idea of introducing a fiat-backed stablecoin to Cardano. So when I sort of um, heard that you guys were doing exactly that, I thought it would be a brilliant opportunity to reach out, have you on the show and maybe ask you some questions. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Perfect. So can I maybe get a bit of an introduction to yourself personally? Yeah, uh, I studied a mix of math, computer science, and economics. Been in the crypto space for the last uh, nine years. I was an early employee back at Paxos, uh, right when the exchange got its trust charter. Uh, my main focus is in the crypto space has been on utilizing the technology for post-trade clearing and settlement solutions. Uh, had a little bit of a foray into mining and uh, basically found myself in the Cardano ecosystem about a year ago. And so that kind of uh, led me down the route of becoming the managing director of Emergo Fintech and launching a couple of new products uh, within the Cardano ecosystem. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So you're from uh, Paxo. So I, I believe it's Paxo that, that they do things like gold backed stable coins and a number of other things. Exactly. So that, that was actually one of the projects that uh, I uh, was uh, part of the, the early stages with back at Paxos in uh, 2016, 2017. Fantastic. So the perfect man for the job then, I guess. Um... <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, something that I have a lot of familiarity with and uh, just basically structuring it in a way in which it's regulatorily compliant and bringing it to a new ecosystem seemed to be a fun challenge. Yeah, for sure. Quite a big challenge, I imagine, as well. Um, could you introduce Anzen? So so you're currently... Anzen is the um, sort of company that are in charge of USDA. Is that correct? Can you sort of introduce Anzen and what you guys are doing? Yeah, so Anzen is actually a product suite that we're launching underneath the Mergo FinTech, which is basically a subsidiary of uh, Emergo Group. Emergo Group is one of the founding entities of the Cardano blockchain. We've got a couple of different business verticals, including a venture arm, a social media arm, an education arm, and then FinTech. And then Anzen is one of the subsections of FinTech, uh, which is basically designed to bridge the gap between the traditional finance world and that of the uh, the DeFi world. And our biggest thing is kind of how do we find a way for people or participants in crypto to be able to easily and uh, safely get access to the regulated financial world and move in between without any kind of frictions. Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it introducing and, and bridging that gap between um, the sort of outside world and, and, and crypto as an inside world um, I think it's still a, 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 a problem that's yet to be solved, but certainly stable coins are a part of that. Um, so what is it that Anzen are trying to um, do exactly? So th there's a couple of things. Like our, our first product that we're launching underneath the Anzen's banner is our USDA, uh, fully fiat-backed stable coin, first within the Cardano ecosystem. But moving beyond that, like we have a vision for 2023 where any participant that holds a wallet within the Cardano ecosystem could quickly and easily move that from their, let's say, anonymous uh, hot wallet into the AdZen system, be able to get a loan on the back end of the crypto in which they're holding, be able to participate in traditional payment systems such as the Visa and MasterCard uh, payment system. Uh, as well as basically be able to bridge back out into the crypto ecosystem if they so chose. So our big thing is like right now, I know there's a, a bunch of viewers probably that hold a lot of their assets in crypto. And if they're paying for real world objects or stuff through that, it's quite a, uh, a difficult process for them to run through that entire loop of liquidating, funding their bank accounts, credit cards, so on and so forth. So for us, we just wanna make it easier for people that own, I would say substantial portions of crypto or any amount of crypto to be able to utilize that value within the real world. And that's what the goal of AdSense is. Yeah, again, quite a big task. <laughs> um, so how did you sort of initially, we, we've touched on, on, on why um, a sort of US dollar stable coin is important. How did the idea come about? You just sort of thought that there's a gap here that needs to be filled for USDA. How did that kind of gap initially, or how did the idea for USDA initially come about? 
So the, the main idea, like if you look at USDA in comparison to the other staple coins that are in the market, we're not doing anything that's, I would say, particularly new. Uh, in regards to the setup and the structure on a regulatory uh, on the regulatory side, it's more so there was a demand within the Cardano ecosystem for a fiat backed stablecoin that had not been serviced yet. So for us, it was an easy way for us to service a product market fit for the Cardano community. And since we're one of the founding entities of the Cardano uh, blockchain, uh, we thought that it was best place for us since we understood the unique aspects of the Cardano blockchain to be able to deliver this as a solution. And kind of throughout this process, we realized that there are actual benefits that you get because like different blockchains yeah. are good at different things. And um, what the Cardano blockchain is particularly good at is in regards to its native assets. So as opposed to in the Ethereum blockchain, where if you're dealing with an ERC-20 token, you're dealing with an actual smart contract that requires computational, I would say, uh, capital in order for you to be able to execute those smart contracts. So moving, let's say, a layer one ETH ERC-20 token sometimes can be more expensive than sending a wire transfer. On Cardano, the native assets are seen uh, as a first class asset, the same way in which ADA is treated. So it makes it very easy for people or uh, for institutions like us to be able to create, I would say, tokenized real world assets in a much more cost effective manner and have that be transferable with, I would say, additional uh, benefits as opposed to some of the other ecosystems. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's really why I was so excited to reach out and, and, and talk to you guys, because I think there's a huge need for a fiat-backed stablecoin within the Cardano ecosystem. Um, we've Obviously, we all know that there's been issues with algorithmic stablecoins before, and I think there's been a damage in terms of trust towards them, referring to obviously what happened with Luna. Um, so fiat-backed stablecoins certainly for last year for myself was 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 an option for me wanting to stay within the crypto space and the fact that you guys are bringing that to cardano and its ecosystem um i think is is, is fantastic and of course usda hasn't launched yet but if people want to take part in usda how do they go about doing this so there's there's a couple of different ways and this is again kind of where it gets down to a jurisdiction by jurisdiction basis so right now we're planning on launching uh at least on like so we've got two different things we've got Anzans, which is our platform, and then we have USDA, which is our staple coin. So the launch of USDA, anyone can participate and take part in USDA by acquiring it through the various DEXs, centralized exchanges that we're going to be launching on, or through the Anzans platform itself. Uh, for the Anzans platform, for people to be able to directly tokenize their own dollars within their bank accounts that they want to port into the Cardano ecosystem, that we're going to be starting off with with just the United States at the very beginning and then kind of expand outward as we have a better uh, regulatory understanding on which jurisdictions we want to deploy in. But at the end of the day, the goal is any participant to quickly log into Anzens, connect their bank account, be able to tokenize the funds within their bank account and have those be able to be freely movable as Cardano native assets on the Cardano blockchain while the actual underlying funds are being held in a safe and regulatorily compliant manner within a regulated financial institution in the United States. Yeah, I think I think I can really see what you're saying about sort of bridging the gap between the traditional financial world and the crypto sort of side of things. And part of that is how do you move funds from one space to another? And uh, here we have uh, Anzen and of course USD um, A coming out of it. And you also mentioned that you guys Anzen is potentially going to explore um, the lending and borrowing side of things. Did I did I have I got that correct, or is that something coming down the line? That, that's something that we're exploring at this point in time because a lot of people when they hold crypto they want to be long crypto but they also want to get cash on the back end of that and i know like you know given the fallout of ftx and a bunch of lenders that have ended up going belly up uh, i believe in that case a lot of them just took on undue risk for chasing i would say yield that probably should not have been there but like over collateralized lending and borrowing we believe could be something that uh is viable so for example, like let's say I've got $10,000 of ADA within my Uroi wallet. Uh, our goal is to get to a point where I can move that from my Uroi wallet or a section of my Uroi wallet to the Anzen section, in which case then it's custodied in a regulatorily compliant financial institution in the States. We could then offer a $5,000 credit line on the back end of that with a prepaid credit card or a debit card that's within our wallet application itself. So by just having your funds within our wallet, you can have access to that loan capabilities to then be able to utilize your credit or debit card for real world purchases. 
At the end of the month, you can either choose to pay that off using cash or crypto, and then you can move your crypto that's in your Anzens account back to your hot wallet. So it's a way for you to be able to get access to the value of your crypto for real world applications, but then still be able to move in and out of that ecosystem in a quick and compliant manner. Our goal is with Anzens, the way in which we've built our technology stack is to be able to tokenize any asset that's being held within a regulatorily sound financial institution or trusted custodian. So dollars was the easiest one for us to start off with, but like precious metals, carbon credits, commodities, and other things. Um, the platform has that in mind, and that's more so a future case where, where does the business line, where can we get the best product market fit uh, for us to start rolling out, I would say, those newer types of uh, asset back tokens. Wow, I mean, I'm getting excited just talking to you. You know, I think um, what you guys are doing is if we're really supposed to merge, and I think blockchain will merge with the sort of traditional financial world and, and the world at large, it doesn't not just, you know, the use cases for blockchain don't just stop with with finance. What Anzen are doing is a, is a vital part of that. Um, and it's really exciting that you're talking about in the future, looking at tokenizing multiple assets, different kinds of assets and, and all this sort of stuff and kind of bringing them all onto or into the cryptoverse um super super exciting stuff what kind of a impact do you see usda having within the cardano ecosystem for example maybe that's a question i can throw at you definitely and we think that the introduction of usda will be a vital component in driving i'd say the proliferation of the DeFi ecosystem within cardano because right now like we have various dexas lending and borrowing platforms but if you look at most of the volume within the other ecosystems, ETH, for example, a lot of that has to do with stable coins. Liquidity providers like to have at least a way for them to be able to hedge themselves out, uh, as opposed to providing two-sided liquidity across, let's say, pools that may be a little bit more difficult to, uh, to manage your risks in. So we believe that by introducing USDA, uh, there's going to be a lot more attention brought to the DeFi ecosystem because it provides one of the fundamental building blocks for any sort sort of finance, which is a stable form of currency in which you can uh, interact and transact with. Yep, I'm right with you on that. I think I think it's going to be huge. I think it's going to add liquidity across the board. Um, it's going to give people a stable option, you know, for for for, for maybe holding their funds or, or or farming with their funds. It's going to also from some of the other developers within the Cardano ecosystem, you know, really sort of excel them in terms of what they can hold and, and, and add just a, a, a sort of overall element of stability. Um, in regards to how USDA is backed, and, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong at any point here. So one USDA will be redeemable for one US dollar, essentially. That, 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 that's what we're looking at here. Exactly. And if we did anything else differently, we would not be in compliance with uh, with US regulation. So that's the, the path that we're choosing to take. And that's the reason why most stable coins, at least that are dollar back, are somewhat structured in a similar manner. Uh, for the actual funds that are backing the, um, the USDA token, uh, they're going to be invested in either cash or held as cash or cash equivalent, which is money market funds and US treasuries. Okay, so 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 treasuries, all all, all, all this kind of stuff, will be uh, back in the, the the stable coin as well. That's that, that that's really interesting. Um, are you planning on just being Cardano specific, or are you guys planning on maybe going cross chain? Because I, I'm a, a big believer in a cross chain sort of universe. Um, are you guys just planning on launching your products on Cardano, or or will you be going elsewhere as well? So we've been exploring to see if we can bring Anzans to other chains, but at this point in time, our primary focus is the Cardano ecosystem, mainly because there is such a need, and we believe that you know from a product market fit standpoint, this makes a lot more sense to us. Uh, going into the other bigger chains where there's the, well, I would say, more prominent stablecoin players, it's hard for us to kind of differentiate ourselves because a lot of the stablecoins are, for the most part, structurally similar. One area in which I know a couple of stable coins are exploring, which is including us, is if we're invested in government treasuries, how do we pass on that interest to the underlying participant? So like right now, I think the US uh, three month treasuries or I know for sure the two, uh, two year treasuries are trading at around like four, four and a half percent, which you're not getting that at bank accounts. So if people are able to hold their funds in stable coin and actually get paid out a higher rate of return than just a savings account, 
within the back and drive, I would say, increased demand and stablecoin uptake across the board. Uh, but it's just more so how do you figure out a regulatory framework for you to be able to do that without the token being considered a, uh, a basically an asset that backs a T-bill, in which case then you're tokenizing a security. Yeah, that's fascinating. You know, we actually just did, um, we did a write-up and we also uh, uh, did a video recently on US treasuries and the fact that treasuries are actually offering a similar yield to the NASDAQ right now. So it kind of doesn't make yeah. sense to hold a risky asset. It kind of makes sense to hold a, a, a government, you know, backed fiat system that's offering you a similar return. It's just, we're in this weird sort of uh, space, I think, macroeconomically. And, and that's super interesting that actually you could hold your stable coin but get yield from the real sort of world, um, which you'll be getting anyway for holding those T-bills. Um, that's super, super um, interesting. And we spoke a little bit about regulation. Have you got thought any sort of broad thoughts on regulations for stable coins? I know it's mass, it's, it's a kind of a, a very broad topic and jurisdiction by jurisdiction, it differs. Um, but have you got any sort of broad thoughts on stable coin regulations? I mean, they seem to be certainly in the UK, the UK or London, was nominated the uh, number one crypto friendly city. Um, and one thing that they're really going after is uh, stable coins in terms of regulating them. Have you got any thoughts on regulations in regards to stable coins? Yeah, I, I actually have a few. And uh, one of the ones that I think may be a little bit controversial, but possibly not, is regulation is needed in order to uh, actually have, I would say, safe and uh, reliable stable coins within crypto. So for me, like, I, come like from the early Bitcoin days, if not your keys, not your coins, so on and so forth, where it's like pure decentralization. The issue though is that works really well if you're dealing with native assets on blockchains. And if a blockchain can be regulated, it is my belief that that is not actually a real blockchain because that's one of the fundamental key components of a blockchain. But the moment you have a asset on a blockchain that represents something that's in the real world, how do you maintain that peg between the token and that real world asset so that you have a perfected interest in that real world, whatever it is that you've tokenized? And that's where I think regulation fits in is um, if the government were to really embrace this new technology, they would set up a regulatory framework, which I believe that's starting to happen within the United States for people to be able to connect, let's say, tokenized assets to the real world and still protect the end consumer at the end of the day. And this is kind of, you know, the responsibility of both policymakers as well as innovators within the crypto ecosystem to kind of work together to understand where those lines are best drawn in order to drive the most value to that end participant. So we believe that stablecoin regulation is inevitable and uh, we're working, like we're keeping track of various new bills and initiatives that are being introduced, at least in the US, uh, from a policymaking perspective and basically mapping out what are the requirements, let's build our stablecoin to meet these new requirements in the event that they get passed. And um, we believe that that's at the end of the day is going to be the best structure. The other thing that's kind of interesting is with new regulation, we believe that we're going to start to see a lot more TradFi firms getting into the stablecoin issuance space. So right now, like the big banks in the United States are afraid to issue and redeem stablecoins because there is no regulatory cover for them to do so. And they don't know what the rules are. As these new rules start to get put into place, for example, Loomis Gillibrand uh, that was introduced in June of 2022, if that rule gets enacted, it actually provides regulatory cover now for larger financial institutions and Fed charter banks to be stablecoin issuers and redeemers and provides them with that legal cover so that they can start to get into the new business. And we believe that's going to be a driving factor for a lot of these financial institutions to partner with, I would say, experienced crypto companies in order to then innovate within, I would say, both environments. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I 100% I agree. I think there's areas where you might have casualties due to regulations, but I think in order for this industry to really succeed, it needs to get regulated. Um, you know, if blockchain really is this technological revolution, which I believe it is, I'm sure you believe it is as well. It's kind of like, I think I was, uh, listening, C listening to CZ talk about the motoring industry and comparing blockchain as a, as a revolution with the motoring industry. And he said, it wasn't till people started going through, um, windshields that they started to regulate it. And that's when it really took off or Wells Fargo published a report where they spoke about blockchain being as, uh, as revolutionary as the, um, electricity. The internet's obviously a comparable one, but it's it's excited, and I'm right there with you. I think I think regulation um, is is needed to sort of further the adoption of blockchain, certainly from the big 
sort of uh, institutions and, and 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 broadly the banks which we all use whether we we like it or not um Vinith, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you um hopefully we can have you guys back on again have you got any sort of closing statements that you want to make before we wrap things up yeah no we're just really excited for the launch of usda i would say one of the closing statements that i'd like to make is the crypto industry right now really i think is in need of a real world use case where the populace does not have to go oh i'm using blockchain technology uh, they just need to go this is providing benefit to my end-to-end -end life right so like when i was playing around in the internet i don't care if the database is uh you know a, a postgres database or a graphical database or anything else at the end of the day i just wanted to work for a particular need that i have and i think if we could start to deliver those things to the I would say greater uh, ecosystem, not just the crypto ecosystem, that's going to really drive crypto forward is how does it benefit people on their day to day lives as opposed to how do we utilize this asset in order to speculate on various coins or, or different things. So I would say that would be kind of my takeaway statement. That's where we're positioning ourselves is real world value, real world use cases, because uh, that's what's needed within this this ecosystem. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be in the blockchain space. We're moving away, like Vinif says, from being speculative to used, um, essentially. Vinif, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to leave a link to where they can find out about Emergo, Anzen, USDA, all your socials in the description, guys. So take a look down there if you want to find more um, out about what's going on here, what what's trying to be achieved. It's been an absolute pleasure, Vinif. Thank you very much for coming on, and hopefully we can speak again soon. Likewise, really appreciate it. Thanks so much.